been a while, hasn't it? Things weren't looking so good, were they? My captors were willing to do anything and everything to me to get what they wanted. It was then my opportunity, my salvation, came to light. Remember, no matter how dark things get, there is always opportunity. Let the seduction begin. I see they cleaned you up. It was most appreciated. Next time, tell your assistants that just a rag of water does wonders. Those, those little lemon-scented moist towelettes sting like a bitch. Looks like the fangs have grown back in, along with that charmingly uppity attitude of yours. And the eye as well. Almost. All the better to see you with, my dear. Put these on, I just ate. Don't take them off till that resembles an eye. Thank you. So, no torture today? No joyride? That's right, this really isn't the time or place now, is it? Blood everywhere. The screaming. Fingers and toes smashed. Oh yes, and eyeballs flying. <laughs> the monks and dependent of few probably wouldn't look kindly upon that now, would they? Kind of ruins the austerity of a mass, doesn't it? Well, you can always tell them it's for the sacrament. <laughs> so, your overzealousness probably didn't go over well with your employer now, did it? Got a little too carried away with the prize. No. He seems to prefer you intact. <laughs> Good thing you heal quickly. I'm sorry. I should have told you about that little quirk of his. His little obsession with appearances. It's alright. Had I been in your shoes, I would have done exactly the same thing. I'm surprised at your civility considering the nature of our last visit. Don't be silly, dear boy. I'm not angry at you at all. You're only doing your job, which in fact you did with wonderful enthusiasm and creativity. I admire that. But isn't this an odd time of day for you to be here? The sun squarely in the middle of the sky. Hmm. The sanctuary is pretty quiet. Your goons don't start crawling around glaring at me until evening. You're alone, aren't you? I don't think anybody knows you're down here. That's my business. I do as I like. Yes. Yes, you do. But I was starting to wonder why you stayed away so long. I was starting to miss you. So, shall we discuss the topic again? <laughs> Don't waste your time. You know my will is much too strong for that, as we have seen. Even if I knew, I would never tell you where she was. Why don't we instead talk about what you really came down here for? I came down here to find the location of the woman. Your woman. No, you didn't. But before we get into that, I could really use a cigarette. I don't think so, Sean. First things first, the correct pronunciation of my name is Sean, from the back of the throat. Say it like you're still in the old country, tending sheep and swilling warm beer, while the entire village is trying to marry you off to some extremely large woman named Gunda, who can tackle you about the knee like a linebacker and then bear you three children before you even have a chance to get up. Um, forget that last part. Sean. Sean. Very good. You're a quick learner. So, how about just a drag then? Please? So tell me, how did he find you? find me? 
Who? You know exactly who I'm talking about. That's how it works. He finds you. I was in a lot of trouble. Was lost. Ended up in a shelter. He got me out. Oh, come now. There's a lot more to the story than this. Those marks on your arm say there's so much more. I was young, doing a lot of drugs. A lot of shit was happening at home. Parents kicked me out. Not for the drugs, but for... For sleeping with boys? No. Okay. How'd you end up in the shelter? I had to get away. People were after me. I was out of options. I started... Cutting. To feel something. Yeah. Better than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You've been there. Could I have another? Sure. The shelter was going to kick me out. Said I was a bad influence. Said I was attracting the wrong crowd. They were right. Rough trade, dealers. You get the idea. Right, boys, yes. One day I got called into the director's office. Thought my ass was going to be on the street. They said they had a job for me. Said I'd get paid could turn into a regular gig. All I had to do was make a couple deliveries a couple times a week to some old guy. And they trusted you with this? In spite of your reputation? That's what I thought, but what the hell? I mean, why not? Take some geezer his groceries or whatever a couple times a week and get paid. Easy. Interesting. And I'm assuming you took them up on their offer, thinking perhaps you could procure a little extra from this geezer? I sure did. And I have to admit, those were my original intentions. Understandable, considering what you were dealt with in life. I probably would have done the same thing. So, tell me, did you speak to him? Did you get to meet him? Well, when I got to the address, there were a lot of people around. Priests, young choir-type boys all milling around, looking very busy around a very large figure. I remember seeing some of the robe he was dressed in. Long, elegant, black robe. Red sash. But the most intense thing I remember was the strong smell of... Roses. Oh, yes. He had a weakness for roses. They were everywhere. Most bishops carried holy water with them. Hmm. Not him. He carried vials of rose water. The smell was intoxicating, almost sickening. After a while, I started associating the rose, the flower, the smell with... Him. Yeah. Indeed. He was enthralled with both the beauty and the pain the flower represented. 